Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I appreciate Tony's, Tony's been here before, uh, representing the board of uh, Keep It Insular Community Services. He's now the executive director for Kitsap Community Services. So he's going to be sharing with us. But I still sit on the board of KPCS. Um, <laughs> who was here last time? Everybody. <laughs> this is so great. So I don't have to talk about my, my boring history. <laughs> Uh, thanks for inviting me. And uh, originally, I was planning on coming at the end of the month, and uh, George asked if I could come a little sooner. So I scrambled. <laughs> we're we're super busy where we are. I'll tell you, uh, I know Representative Kilmer's going to be in town in Gig Harbor tomorrow. He's coming to our office tomorrow as well. I and we're... Did, Did you? Yeah, yeah. Derek. The only ones Derek is funny. <laughs> well, he has to. He has to put up an image, right? <laughs> so he's a great guy, though. Uh, so we, we're super busy. So um, I'm just going to start into the presentation real quick. Uh, let's see if we can do it the right way. So can you just go to um, present uh, the slideshow and, and turn it into the slideshow up there? Uh, or just go uh, shift slideshow. Yeah. Say. No, no, not that one. Uh, up there where it says from beginning. Right. The left and, and from beginning. There you go. Oh, over here. Oh, On the left. Over to the left. There, there you go. go. Oh. Again, I, I was working on this this morning before I came to church <laughs> as well. And I appreciate, I always appreciate the service because I never know what Pastor Seth is going to talk about, right? <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea of service and, uh, you know, fear. I'm, I'm not down with fear these days. I'm, I'm all, I'm all in. You know, just to serve. So uh, we all have learned our lessons, right? But I, I love to serve this morning. So just as a preface, KPCS. You know, these are my roots here on the peninsula, on the key. I grew up in Port Orchard, um, and left for a long, long time outside of the country. Nonprofit work, Peace Corps, all kinds of things. Got a really strange background. But I wanted to remind everybody about KPCS and the logging show. We're back into the logging show this August. I think the last time I was here, a lot of people didn't even realize that there was a logging show. And I brought that back to the board and back to our admin that, oh, we need to do better outreach in Gig Harbor because it's just right up there at the park and it's a lot of fun. This time after two years of COVID, it's going to be a big community event, you know, just getting the community back. There's going to be lots of stuff for kids to do. The loggers are out there doing their cutting of the trees and it's a lot of fun. It really, really is. So um, you'll have more information. George, I'll just be giving you information. In fact, uh, maybe I can come back and do another presentation later, okay, as we get closer. The KBCS, you know, we've survived the pandemic. We still do uh, what we do, senior, senior services, uh, uh, food delivery to seniors. We have a food bank uh, inside right now. Uh, our truck is going around Gig Harbor right now. And right after this, I'm gonna go, I'm going to go to help unload the truck. Uh, this is what we do on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, we do outreach, and what I'm trying to do right now is involve KPCS in the community action program, which is what I do now. So, if if we can just go to George, next slide. So, it's a community resources. I'm the executive director. We have about two staff of 200, and it's big. It's gone through a lot of changes. On one hand, and on the other hand, we haven't changed much. Uh, it was started back in during the Johnson administration, right? I was just a, a kid. Uh, and the idea was the war against poverty. But what I found in my short tenure as executive director is the, the reluctance to innovate and to adapt. And hopefully I bring that to the organization. Which, so this is our mission, to create hope and opportunity for low-income Kitsap County residents 
by providing resources that promote self-sufficiency. And I'm going to explain some of the ways we do that. So these are goals, self-sufficiency, strength in families and other support systems, pride and ownership in our community, and improved condition, conditions where people live. So, so community action agencies right now, well, there are 30 in Washington state, but it's a national organization. They're called community action partnerships. A lot, of, they do different things. We're, we do much more than others. I'll put it to you this way. We do housing, Head Start programs. We basically run most of the Head Start programs <coughs> in Kitsap County. We do WIC, we do weatherization, and I'm gonna discuss this as we go forward. So childcare, Head Start, early head, head, start, head start, basically they're, they're kids from, well, babies all the way up to five years old transitioning to kindergarten. It's been really tough during COVID because the kids are wearing masks, the adults are wearing masks, the kids have a hard time seeing facial expressions, and 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 I'm not sure how we get past that or by that. All the teachers recognize that we're missing something. The kids are missing something and, and learning. I'm sure there's going to be a study about this, you know, and there probably is a study going forward, but how it affects the kids, how the kids have not been able to learn when you can't see their mouth, right? Uh, and, and just keep in mind, we have kids from all demographics, right? So this part, the smile, the expressions, it's super important. So um, we do homeless child care. This stuff we still do right now. Job training, uh, community jobs, uh, Washington State Innovation uh, Opportunity Act. We teach veterans and adults how to write business plans, how to form a business, how to write a resume. We do that in our offices. We, we did do AmeriCorps, but we recently uh, transitioned out of that. Uh, financial skills, that's our business education to support the training. Uh, we have two partnerships right now with a veterans organization and, and an organization that uh, uh, focus on uh, uh, adults with disabilities, and we partner with them to teach business skills. Um, and weatherization, one of our biggest uh, programs. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Right now. <laughs> so uh, the food, the meals on wheels programs, huge thing for us. We deliver. We have a kitchen, full kitchen in one of our main facilities at 845 8th Street in Riverton. That kitchen provides meals to the kids and all the Head Start programs around the area. And we also deliver seniors meals for Meals on Wheels. Um, shelter, we provide housing, our housing solution centers. Um, well, I'm gonna explain this one a little later just because they're for homeless services, our, uh, people without homes and 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 eviction and rental assistance. I'm going to explain this a little later. And the energy bills. So that's energy assistance. It's in conjunction with our housing solutions center. All right. So this, this is our focus for the housing and community service team. So weatherization and and we basically make homes much more energy energy efficient. Energy. That's assistance with electric, gas, and heating bills. So let's say I have a problem, I can't pay my heating bill. And maybe I've had that problem for three months or so. Well, it's pretty easy to apply for us, apply through us because we get money from the state and from the county and the federal government flows through our organization. We pay your bill, um, we pay your bill in the future and we make an arrangement to do that. So it's a, it's a cool program. Housing Solutions Center, if we can't do it, we try to coordinate with our um, other uh, with other organizations in the area to provide the solution. Wow. What was that? Was that the Lord? Hey. Right. Question. <laughs> <laughs> Are 
you okay? <laughs> so, my question is about weatherization. Will you weatherize for... It's my next slide. For rentals? It's easy, easy, okay. easy. <laughs> the answer is yes. The short answer is yes. Okay? We worked with the landlord to do that. So the short answer is yes, but let's keep going. Uh, housing team who manage homeless services uh, and programs, uh, also with homelessness, rental assistance programs. We provide rent and utility assistance for low income renters uh, that face eviction and the veterans assistance also for, for low income veterans. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep talking about this. Weatherization, here we go. Okay, so this is a cool program, all right, uh, George. So what is weatherization? It's air sealing and insulation. Uh, our guys come in and do a study of the house, figure out what's going on, and we have solutions for a lot of problems, George. So the idea is to increase climb comfort and warmth. You see there's a, a new heating system and uh, uh, HVAC systems being in installed, George. So we improve air quality, reducing allergies. So uh, carbon monoxide monitors, smoke detectors, basically help reduce stress and decrease uh, allergens, George. We work on stairs, we deal with bathrooms, all these things that cause a problem with energy bills or uh, problems with weatherization in your house. Um, we're trying to increase uh, a building's serviceable, serviceable life expectancy. Um, one more slide, George. So what, what, this is what a client can expect. There's an audit. Um, one of our professionals comes in and audits the house. Starts with a visit to the house, estimating insulation levels in the attic, walls, and floors. So what they do is go up and spray this thing through through the, the attic, for example, and it measures the insulation, okay? They do the same thing under the house. So I had a chance to go see um, uh, an audit about two months ago in Port Orchard. It was amazing. It, it was actually the end of it. I didn't see the beginning. I saw the end where the guys were coming in with the, the equipment, measuring how much uh, cold air was coming through the windows. They would shut the the home and then air would pump through the house so they could see where it was leaking through to see if they made any mistakes. It was amazing. So that's part of the di diagnostic testing for air leakage and house pressures, looking at current heat sources and distributions, conducting com co combustion safety tests on fuel burning appliances, educating the client on simple tips for conserving energy and water, observing any structural or building repair concerns, and creating a customized home assessment and action plan for future with weatherization. So not all weatherization is the same. Some, some, somebody may have an insulation problem. Somebody may use an old furnace that has uh, oil. So there's one, I was talking to somebody after I went to the house in Port Orchard, called a friend of mine. And I know her mom, who's almost 100, has a home in, in Tacoma. And I knew that it was uh, one of those old furnaces, right? And every winter they'd have to go and get oil and fill it up. And it was a hassle. So I called my friend Darlene. I said, Darlene, you know, we do weatherization. She said, yeah, I found that out. I'm already getting it installed, a new furnace. I said, oh, this is so great because it saves a lot of money. And, um, and frankly, myself, I didn't realize there were still old furnaces being operated in these old, old homes. But, uh, and people don't realize what we do. But this is one of the services. Another thing, like the Port Orchard home, we installed a whole new HVAC system, did all the insulation above and below. And this was a, uh, how should I say, a mobile home. And um, we redid the stairs and the walkway leading up to the home to make it safer for the person who lived there and uh, changed on the carbon monoxide uh, detectors. It was, it was brilliant and installed a new wash, washing machine because the other one was just uh, uh, not working. Basically that was a $25,000 job, but we have funding to do that. So 
We do do rentals and we work with the, the landlords to do that. So the simple way to do it, here, go to the next slide. Oh, so here's our target group. Uh, seniors, veterans, disabled uh, uh, adults, families with young children, and there's a there's a there's a uh, basically a formula that's used. It's a federal government formula, but we try to do uh, as much as possible. We try not to turn anybody away uh, that's in need. And George, so so here here's a flyer, for example, on who who can apply. But simply, you can just go on to kcr.org. And, and look at the homepage and you scroll down to see weatherization, just fill out the form. The form is so easy. And, and there's a box with the comment field that says, what do you need? And then somebody will call you the very next day or respond to you, okay? Super easy. But a lot of people don't know that we do this. So I'm trying to get the word out. I tell everybody, I'm in the grocery outlet, right? <laughs> talking to the cashier. And I can do that in a couple of different languages, uh, talk to people, and I hand out my card all the time. And people don't know what KCR is. It's not just Head Start, it's not just WIC, energy assistance. We do so much, and there's money available. So we're here to serve, and that's the deal. What do you use to do the repairs? Well, there is another good question. So we have contractors. Actually, it's become a circular experience for us. About three years ago, one organization, one company, their HVAC company, well, they weren't at the time, it was a husband and wife, they wanted to start an HVAC company. This is five years ago at this point. They came through our, our, our organization, through our BEST program, we taught them how to write a business plan, taught them where to get funding for, now they're one of our contractors for HVAC, okay? Uh, they, we probably have about four companies that we work with, but there's a problem, George, we can't find enough. So, so one thing I'm going to bring up with Derek tomorrow is the bureaucracy with the Department of Commerce. So if I'm a contractor, there's lots of work to be done. I don't want to have to go through the bureaucracy of doing my reporting with the Department of Commerce. I'm sorry, I'm getting into the weeds here. And at the same time, I'm complaining, right? Because I'm gonna bring this up tomorrow. So the contractors would rather do the easier work and still get paid rather than work with us. Fortunately, we still have some great contractors that have been working with us for years that are loyal to uh, the, the, the clients and the community in which we serve, okay? So did, did I answer your question? Okay, I'm gonna leave my card here too. If you, if anybody has any questions, okay? So I'm gonna transition to the housing and homeless plan. So the idea in Kitsap County and in Washington State is to make homelessness rare. We all know that's a problem right now. Just just the, the lack of affordable housing um, and, and COVID didn't make it easier, made it hard. So we, our idea, well, the idea is to make homelessness free, make homelessness one time, and continuously improve the homeless response system. And what we're trying to do is expand community <coughs> engagement. So two weeks ago, there was the point in time count. Uh, I'm pretty sure it happened here at Pierce County, but it was in Kitsap County as well. It was delayed. Normally, it's that last, last um, Thursday of January every year uh, because I've participated in it before kids of county has a unique way of doing the point in time count everybody know what the point in time count is okay the point in time count is something they do in washington state maybe around the country where they pick a day in this case last thursday of january to go out and try to count uh homeless or seeing people on the street or try to do survey work uh, try to find where they are. In our case, we went into the forest, we split up Kitsap County, um, uh, wasn't just KCR, it was volunteers from Kitsap County and went to cars, went to the Walmart parking lot, you know, people, places where you don't think about. And, and uh, it's almost like homelessness, it's right there. Um, unless you see it or know it, maybe you wouldn't notice it, right? So we did a little training on how to do it, how to find it, how to talk to people, how to gain trust with people so they actually talk to you and figure out the situation. 
And me, of course, I'm like handing out my business card. They call us, call us, call us. Uh, maybe there's a solution and let us actually try to help you help with whatever we can help out with, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so in terms of planning, what kind of facilities, if any, are available for people who are at home? Yeah, there are, there are shelters around like Salvation Army has one. There are, there's one in Port Orchard that frankly, uh, they're trying to open, but for a couple of reasons, some of them political, some of them local, they've been unable to do that. That's the one that there's a, like an old gym by the McDonald's back there uh, up in Montville Road. So that's going to be a shelter. Right now, the Methodist Church uh, right by the county courthouse is, uh, serves as a shelter as well. I was over there two weeks ago talking to the church. Uh, they're really, really great. Uh, and there are shelters around Riverton as well. What about any kind of, are there any attempts to have permanent housing? Um, easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's, let's keep going, George. Okay, so temporary housing. There are all these different definitions, frankly, that I'm learning. As a new guy on board and in town, I'm learning from my team and, um, and understanding what the deal is. So temporary housing, well, temporary housing is interventions for those folks that, you know, they need to leave the shelter or the unit at the end of a time period. And uh, households are considered homeless while they're enrolled in temporary housing. So. So let's say I'm getting evicted, and let's say that we can't do anything about that, meaning KCR, Kids Community Resources. But uh, partnering with Brimerton Housing Authority and other organizations that provide vouchers. And, and again, these are short-term solutions or like band-aids that maybe they'll work short-term, or maybe there's something better to do. However, so, Kids of Mental Health recently uh, bought the Quality Inn over off of, well, doesn't really matter, Kids of Way. And they're using that as a shelter um, for people, unhoused people. And so we facilitate the voucher process through our navigators, they're called, with our Housing Solutions Center to, to stay there. And we don't run that. Um, uh, short-term uh, shelter at Quality Inn, we just facilitate the process, okay? There could be a better way to do this. And I'm gonna talk about this at the very end of the presentation because this is one of the things, I don't, not, I'm not sure anyone has really figured out how to really address homelessness and the root of it. And, and I know we all know we can't solve it all, Maybe there's a better way to do it. Okay. So let's see, emergency shelters, transitional housing, um, which is what we do. We have about 36 units. We're trying to get more units where it's transitional, meaning some uh, a family or someone can stay there one or two years if there's an emergency and we transition to longer term housing. I know Seattle, the city and King County, they're really big on this. They have their own problems and we have a, unique set of problems because because it's Kitsap County and Pierce County and every county I think it's different so George the next slide this is one question yes. vouchers are they finance they are so I, yes they are and the state so I'm just gonna get me riled up here okay <laughs> so so Riverton Housing Authority gets these vouchers for HUD. And sometimes they set the bar so high that Riverton Housing Authority can't actually give them away. You know what I mean? It's the bureaucracy. So uh, a year ago, a new, a new person came into town to run Riverton Housing Authority. Her name is Jill Strack. She's brilliant. She's wonderful. And I went out to coffee with her and she's funny, funny, funny. But she's, she came from Snohomish and from King County, 
and now she's in Kitsap County trying to find a better way to do services. And she's rocked the boat and she's waiting to be challenged to what she what she's doing. So they've been sitting on 600 vouchers for like two years, three years, four years actually, because the old, old executive director had to stick to this formula, right? And so that's 600 vouchers for 600 people or families that can be used. So Jill said, okay, we're going to challenge HUD and wait for HUD to come back to us. And what she has found out is HUD will never say, okay, you have to kick that family out once they're there, right? So it's a big secret, so nobody talk about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but she's, she's moving towards that. We're trying to help that, okay? On the other hand, they also have some emergency vouchers for domestic violence situations uh, or things that happen in emergency. So that was a small set. And those vouchers are use it or lose it vouchers. So she had 36 of those down to 24 and she's trying to get them out so she can replenish them so they don't uh, get wasted, right? There, there is money to be had. We as partners with Bremerton Housing Authority is trying to find that better way. So here we have these great new innovators coming into organizations like the Perfect Housing Authority, and hopefully we can work together to do something much bit bigger. St. Vincent de Paul. So they have a new executive director. His name is Joe Craig, super guy. So they reached out to us a couple of months ago. Joe and I, he lives on the key, right? Now he's on the board of Kids of the KPCS, right? I rattled him into getting on the board since he lives on the key as well. So um, they are trying to find a new vision. And their idea is, uh, well, he had a great quote that I wish I could remember, but you know, the idea of the Christian, you don't hoard money, you give it away, right? And I just love the concept, right? So they own two cities, two square blocks in Bremerton, and they have cash flow and they have money. Joe doesn't have a finance background, I do. So we're trying to figure out how to, how to do it. Their idea is to build a four-story uh, shelter. Right now, adjacent, they have a domestic violence shelter and it's, it's wonderful, it's full, frankly. But their places are falling down. They said, look, where do we go with homeless services and housing? And how do we work together? So he called us. We convened uh, a list of partners and we're trying to work through it. Kids of Mental Health, there's a, there's a place, it's a 72 facility um, that is about to be open. It's called Pendleton Place. Grand opening is this month and they're going, people are starting to move in. Services on the bottom, people living, it's one, one person units. Not sure how it's gonna work because Kids of Mental Health, this isn't their buggy way. It's the first time they've ever done that. We're all, meaning the community, we're all gonna learn from them, learn the good things, the bad things, and how to make it better. It's too late, it's done. It was a $23 million project. We were proud of those guys, but uh, um, the idea now is trying to do it together, not do it in silos, okay? Uh, um, George? So, so there's a difference in housing, temporary housing, permanent housing interventions, and permanent supportive housing. So with, with uh, um, uh, kids of mental health, you know, those are supposed to be temporary up to two years, but we'll see. Um, we are actually trying to do a permanent housing solution ourselves, but we'll see as well. We're trying to work together um, and do it together because maybe there's efficiencies in how we operate. And the whole deal is what I'm trying to tell all the executives, I don't have to own it. You don't have to own it either. We can do it together. It doesn't have to be my project, right? It could be our, our, our solution to something. You know, it's kind of a much bigger vision. What's this, what's this uh, supportive housing? Does that mean mental health services? Yes, yes, that's exactly right. And other, not just mental health, but other other services as well. What we all realize is, again, a 
it's not just a voucher. Sometimes it's all these services together. I'm going to mention that at the, at the end, okay? There's something else that's going on that I want to talk about. So our housing team, well, I'm sorry. I'm, waste, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time talking about this, right? Because there's a lot to talk about. So uh, I'll kind of move on. But our team works, uh, works closely with the customers that come in. We try to do referrals, we do case management. Maybe we don't do it so well. This is something we need to uh, get better on. And hopefully there's another organization that's gonna help us try to do that. Uh, our rental assistance team, um, I got a great story to tell you. And again, this is another thing that we need to get better uh, doing. So three weeks ago, three weeks ago, this guy, uh, his name is Hoel. Well, I'll back up. A uh, person called me in my office, who I had never met before, but I knew who she was. She said, Tony, uh, there's a person that has been coming into your office, speaks Spanish, doesn't speak e English, and, and no one is there to help him. He came in one day, no one could understand him. The set it up with the translator for the next day, and she wasn't there. I said, have him call me. So I had the conversation with him. I said, okay, come in on Tuesday and I'll get the team together, which I did. All it was was miscommunication and he was so frustrated. He was about to be evicted with his family, his three kids and his wife, lost his job, it's all COVID, right? But he found another job, but he needed help. He was four months behind in rent and he was afraid, he couldn't pay his utilities. So Stephanie, our, our excellent, excellent uh, navigator, the conversation was all in Spanish. We we're all talking about it. I was active in the conversation. And at the end, she was like, okay, I'm the, we'll pay your back rent right now. We'll pay your rent through July. We have energy assistance for you. I'll call your landlord right now. I'll call your, your boss to make sure he knows you were here, right? And not, not at work, right? And it was cool. I mean, he started crying. I said, okay, easy, easy. But he was talking about just the embarrassment that he felt about asking for help, right? And actually he didn't know until he talked to this person, her name is Matita, to call us. So we're trying to reach that segment of the population too. Don't be embarrassed, come on. This is, we have the money, come on in, okay? And maybe you don't know this is what we do, but this is, we're here to serve, right? Anyway, it was a cool, cool deal. So this is a project that we're trying to complete. We have about 1.8 million. We still need about 1.5. It's nine, nine units. It's, uh, it says Manette, but it's not really in Manette. It's on this side of the bridge, uh, but we already own the land and we already have commitments from, uh, uh, from the city of Bremerton and from the county. And I think we're close. Uh, there are some budget approvals that happened this week have been part of that policy advocacy. And uh, I am hopeful that it says 2024 that we'll still be on track for this, okay? Okay, really quick transition. Early early learning and family services. Uh, you know, this is basically our Head Start program, it's great. So Head Start and WIC, they're all folded into the same thing. Women, infant, and children, Basically, uh, it's a nutritional program. It's really, really helpful. We do food services for kids and for families, really. We do a thing called the parenting phase, but we help parents um, um, work better or understand their kids' needs, if need be. And uh, part of that is facilities and maintenance. So uh, long-term goals, the, these are internal goals, really because we want to increase duration of classes across the program. We want to replace some of our aging facilities and improve some of our technology. Uh, fortunately, we're doing that right now. We're, we're on a good track to do that, George. Short-term goals, we want to get fathers more involved um, in, in being with their kids and understanding their kids' needs. Um, we want to increase school readiness right now. We're in this interesting transition because of the mask and COVID and trying to fill up all of our spots in the Head Start program. We have probably six different centers around Pitsit County, Silver Falls, 
uh, Bremerton, there's three. Okay, we have seven. Um, it's pretty amazing. But really, strengthening families is what we're trying to do across demographics and kids of color. Um, yeah, increased access to families making 100 to 200 percent uh, poverty rate. We're trying to, again, it's a visibility. It's visibility, making sure everybody knows about us. Um, and increased access for military families. You know, military families are transitory by nature, but that shouldn't exclude their kids from being part of the program. So WIC, Women, Infant, and Children Nutrition Programs, we have four sites, uh, about 4,200 mothers with children. Oh man, I should move that picture over. Does it really matter? Because our, our WIC folks says there are probably still 2,000 eligible women out there that aren't involved with us. So that was a shocking statistic for me to understand that. So how do we reach them? Well, there are a couple of things that we're working on right now. One of them I'm gonna show you, you guys will be the first people to see it actually when we get to the end, okay? But 2000 and we have the money. I mean, we have the money and maybe again, maybe it's embarrassment or maybe they have another program and they don't think that they're, they're qualified. So we just have to tell them that they are, right? Trying to figure that out. But to me, if we can supply, provide that benefit, it's important to do. So our food services, and we serve a lot of meals, uh, that's for sure. And we do a lot of meals on wheels and we serve and cater all the kids every single day at the at the, the programs. I remember I was in I was in Paulsville uh, with our head of Head Start and the our van pulled up with the kids' meals. It was so great. The kids know when the food's coming, right? But it's really, really great. <laughs> George. Okay, parenting place. So we provide parenting pl classes, um, especially for kids who witness uh, domestic violence. We try to provide the classes for that and programs for that, try to strengthen families, that's for sure. And we don't charge for this. So this is a problem. And this is the old way of, of doing this is Department of Commerce and the US government and how to solve poverty, right? It's a piecemeal approach. And so even our setups, we have we have 76 grants. The grants all run on different cycles. So it's a monitoring and a compliance nightmare and an accounting nightmare as well. And, uh, and there's a better way to do this. I'm just gonna briefly talk about that. So we do, we, we go back, go back. So donors, we, 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 we work with donors. There's a program coming up called the, the Great Give. Uh, it's once a year, every year uh, in Kitsap County, and we're part of that, and I'm going to talk about that as well. And then, um, you know, for, for our needs, we use every single donation just to try to help people not slip through the cracks. Because sometimes, most of the time, you, the grants are so specific, so spelled out, the grants don't even keep up. Let's say we signed up for a grant, we have a hundred thousand dollar grant to do x well everybody knows the cost of inflation the grants are so skinny i mean and they're so specific to what you do that there's some things that fall outside of the group outside of the grant so as a recourse okay we raise funds and try to cover expenses because we never want to turn people away although we do and that go ahead george that leads to innovation so I took my new director of housing, he's a young guy, but he came up through our organization. I just promoted him, he, he was just promoted last month. And there's a, a community action program in Aberdeen called Coastal Cap. They started, they didn't start the system, they basically incubated it. And it's a new way to have to pay for your program. It's fee for service, it's called. The US government, there's like 600 million dollars sitting in Washington state that's nobody using. Only his organization is using it. And it's because everyone is stuck in the past. 
No one wants to innovate. So Greg, we've become fast friends, fast friends. So I brought my director of housing there last Friday, a couple of days ago. We spent the whole day with this team going through the model, talking about how to change, how to be innovative and adapt to the current situation where I'm not writing 50 grants, but it's an integrated approach to how we deal with the unhoused, the Head Start, mental health, doing it all together. And it's, it's a monitored, how should I say, it? it's a, a, a monitored, integrated approach that the US government will back if more community action programs adopt it. So I know there are a couple of our senators here that are all for it. When I first came on board and I found out about it, I went to some of our folks, our old director of housing and our fiscal person, they're like, yeah, I've heard about this, but uh, you know, it's just this sometimes unwillingness to change. Or maybe, I don't want to use that in a negative term, but sometimes it's easier, or it seems easier, just to status quo. But who, what are we? We're here to serve, right? And we're here to try to find the best way to do that. And, and hopefully we have new blood in now and, and there, there's a new way of doing some things and maybe there's a, there's a hybrid approach that where we can be more self-sufficient as an organization, but at the same time, our clients can benefit because the idea is transition from this situation to something much better, right? So the, Boy, compassion and outreach, I guess that's all I've been talking about, right? I just haven't said it. And really, we want to be representative of the communities in, what, in which we represent. I'll just put it to you this way. I'm the only person of color in the leadership position, right? It's the first time, and, uh, and I recognize that. I remember the last sermon I was here with Pastor Seth, you know, he was talking about diversity and uh, unconscious bias. And I went up afterwards, I said, did you do that for me? <laughs> he says, no, that was planned. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> it was so funny. I tell that story because I talk about you guys all the time, I do. So let's, talk, let's show that video. This video is very small, but we just put it together. I hired this, we, I have a consultant and we hired a, a videographer from uh, Tacoma and he came over with his team, been working on it for three weeks and uh, it's super cool. You guys are the first ones who've seen it, okay? So, uh, George, I appreciate you. Don't get nervous. Yeah, maybe you have to exit. Yeah, that's a exit the slideshow. And then the oh, because so this is on Zoom. That's what's going on. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, It, it's important to see the video because it's a whole, it wraps it all together. This is it, guys. I know everybody wants to leave, okay? There we go. Going online, and I was researching different ways to help and schools to get my kid into. During the pandemic, the owner of our house that we were renting decided to sell the place. I needed to find other means of supporting my family. It was just at the beginning of the COVID uh, virus hit, so I ended up losing my job there. It was really difficult to find work. It took a year and a half before I actually realized that KCR had this part of KCR. Once we did, oh my God, everything just happened so fast. They got us uh, availability to use the internet. Um, the staff here actually was able to help.
help with uh, how to use the programs and what else to do. So I went to pay my water bill at the city hall uh, down here on uh, Pacific. And uh, I saw a pamphlet and it said, addressed uh, weatherization for low income seniors and, and others. So I said, oh, but what happened was my furnace went out. Ouch! And so I said, oh, I can't afford to buy another furnace no time soon. So what I did was I called and I applied. This was a serious, serious, serious blessing with all the different things that uh, they were given to, that were given to me through this weatherization program. I want to say to everybody at KCR, thank you for the opportunity and the help that you all have given to my family and I. For all the individuals that helped us personally, that word is just not enough to change lives. Maybe it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody else. I felt very heard and understood, and I didn't feel judged, which in a lot of places when you go, seeking aid you get judged and i didn't get any of that here it was wonderful thank you 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 really changed our lives so the mission of kcr kids of community resources we're committed to creating hope and opportunity for kids of county residents by providing self-sufficiency and stability and that's what we're trying to accomplish through everything that we do i would implore anybody those that have the opportunity to give please give because you will not be disappointed in the things that you invested your money in to help others that uh, really need the help if you have the ability to give no matter what that is know that your funds your service is doing something very important for the communities we have the opportunity to do something so cool right now. Everybody is trying to find a shared common vision. I'm in. I'm all in. That's not bad, huh? That's good, huh? <laughs> so the great gift starts uh, in April. There's an early the end of April 1, even to $10, $20, whatever it is. You know, Man, that is so good. I love this video. And this is just a teaser because we interviewed uh, quite a few families. And uh, last week we did some more. Tomorrow we're going to do, tomorrow's Monday, you know, before Derek comes in, we're going to interview some of the staff. And, uh, and uh, yeah, this is just a teaser. One of our interviews was all in Spanish and it was great. We're going to subtitle it. And, uh, you know, we we're talking about demographics and reaching a segment of the community. And that particular family, her kids are in Head Start, and they do do WIC, and they do, do uh, participate in other programs, and it's wonderful. So, anyway, I'm sorry it took so much time. Um, but, <laughs> but that was cool. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to leave my cards, leave some music cards. Here's uh, some, some of the flyers. And, and anybody who wants to pick up the phone and call me, that's great. And I appreciate you guys that invited me. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, we're all here to serve, right? I can see by the uh, point of view as the director. <laughs> Thank you.